Good evening and welcome to the Mirror of the World. I want to thank you for joining today. It's time for us to locate ourselves in the Word of God. You know, I normally say this. Read the Bible for yourself. You know, um, every time we look into the Word of God, we should look at it as if we are looking at a mirror. And then you see your image. So when you look into the mirror of the world, uh, you see maybe a part of your body that is hurting. Um, and then you look into the mirror of the world. The mirror says that you are being healed by the stripe of Jesus. So before you check the mirror of the world, um, your body says that you got pain in it. But when you check the scriptures, it said you are being healed by the stripe of Jesus. So we read in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18, that whatever we see in the world is what we are going to be transformed into. So as we look at the word of God today, I trust God that he will show us something. And whatever we see today is what we are going to be transformed into in Jesus' name. I, I like what um, that scripture in 2 Corinthians chapter 3 uh, verses 18 amplified version says i said then we will move from one level of glory to another level of glory so while we're doing this we want to move from one level of glory to another level of glory if someone asks you why are you reading the word i want to move from one level of glory to another level of glory wow uh, that that's a revelation right there and that's a good incentive for you to read god's word you know um are you tired of the status quo? Uh, do you want a change? Do you want a promotion? Do you want increase? Do you want to move to another level of glory? Then read the word of the Lord and let the Holy Spirit transform you into what you see in his word. Uh, my name is Buki Adioshun. I am your regular host on the program called The Mirror of the Word. And uh, we do this 10 p.m. UK time every day. We read a chapter of the Bible and then we pray for those who are sick. Uh, for some weeks now, uh, for some days now, we've been reading the book of John. So today, by the grace of God, we are going to be reading John chapter 8. Um, I would like to do a quick recap before we go on to that. John chapter 1, we said that if you need counseling, if you need any form of, you need to, you, you need answers to any questions of life, get in the word of God. The Holy Spirit showed us that uh, the word of God is more experienced and older than anyone on the face of the earth. So by reading the Bible, you will find answers to questions of life. In John chapter 2, we said that the Lord we give you a new wine a better one so no matter how sweet your relationship is the lord is going to give you a new wine in john chapter 3 we said you must be born again hallelujah you must be born again you must be baptized with water and with the holy ghost and we look at the uh, characteristics of a spirit led life in John chapter 4, oh my God, what a, what a wonderful chapter. Uh, Jesus said, I sent you to reap where you have not sown, and you have entered into their labor. So as you're watching this program today, the Lord is bringing you into the labor of other people. So you also labor and other people will enter into your labor so that uh, both you the laborer and the people the, who are going to harvest, uh, there's going to be great joy because we all receive our reward. So that's what Jesus said. John chapter 4, he said, uh, where you worship does not matter. It is who you are and how you worship is important. You know, they who worship God must do so in spirit and in truth. John chapter 5, you can be made whole today. Uh, you remember that man by the pool? Uh, Jesus went to him knowing he'd been there for 38 years. So I'm saying to you, you don't have to wait until the time that I pray for those who are sick. Right 
now you can be made whole because it is not the pastor it's not me doing it is jesus doing it verse 6 chapter 6 says my body is meat indeed i love that and my blood is drink indeed say whosoever eat my body and drink my blood will live forever that's talking about communion right there and in john chapter 7 we said there are rivers not river in you out of you shall flow the rivers of living water there is well there are wells of salvation in you springing up unto everlasting life go and check all the videos they're all available on youtube and let's get into the word of the lord today we are going to be reading john chapter 8 and uh i want to read from the easy to read translation of the bible today so please like i normally say uh this is not a uh, another preaching session it's a session where we get to read the word of the lord together and we trust god to show us something in his word so it's time for us uh to read his word john chapter 8 jesus went to the mount of olives early in the morning he went back to the temple area the people all came to him and he sat and taught them the teachers of the law and the pharisees brought a woman they had caught in bed with a man who was not her husband they forced her to stand in front of the people then jesus said uh, then said jesus teacher this woman was caught they said to jesus teacher this woman was caught in the act of adultery the law of moses commands us to stone to death any such woman what do you say we should do they were saying this to trick jesus they wanted to catch him saying something wrong so that they could have a charge against him but jesus stooped down and started writing on the ground with his finger the jewish leader continued to ask him their question so he stood up and said anyone here who has never sinned should throw the first stone at her then jesus stooped down again and wrote on the ground when they heard this they began to leave one by one the older men left first and then the others jesus was left alone with the woman standing there in front of him he looked up again and said to her where did you where did they all go did no one judge you guilty she answered no one sir then jesus said i don't judge you either you can go on now but don't sin again later jesus talked to the people again he said i'm the light of the world whoever follows me will never live in darkness they will have the light light that gives life but the pharisees said to jesus when you talk about yourself you are the only one to say that these things are true so we cannot accept what you say jesus answered yes i'm saying this thing about myself but people can believe what i say because i know where i came from and i know where i'm going but you don't know where i came from or where i'm going you judge me the way people judge other people i don't judge anyone but if i judge my judging is true because when i judge i'm not alone the father who sent me is with me your own law says that when two witnesses say the same thing you must accept what they say i am the one of the witnesses who speak about myself and the father who sent me is my other witness the people asked where is your father jesus answered you don't know me or my father or if you knew me you will know my father too jesus said these things while he was teaching in the temple area near the room where the temple offerings were kept but no one arrested him because the right time for him had not yet come again jesus said to the people i will leave you you will look for me but you will die in your sin you cannot come where i am going so the jewish leaders asked him themselves will he him kill himself is that why he said you cannot come where i'm going but jesus said to them you people are from here below but i am from above you belong to this world but i don't belong to this world i told you that you will die in your sins yes if you don't believe that i am you will die in your sin they asked then who are you jesus answered i am what i have told you from the beginning i have much more i could say to judge you but i tell people only what i have heard from the one who sent me and he speaks the truth they did not understand who he was talking about he was telling them about the father 
So he said to them, You will lift up the Son of Man, then you will know that I am. You will know that whatever I do is not by my own authority. You will know that I say only what the Father has taught me. The one who sent me is with me. I always do what pleases him. So he has not let me alone. While he was saying this thing, many people believed in him. So Jesus said to the Jews who believe in him, If you continue to accept and obey my teaching, you are really my followers. You will know the truth and the truth will make you free. He answered, We are Abraham descendants and we have never been slaves. So why do you say that we will be free? Jesus said, The truth is everyone who sin is a slave, a slave to sin. A slave does not stay with a family forever, but a son belongs to the family forever. So if the sons make you free, you are really free. I know you are Abraham's descendants, but you want to kill me because you don't want to accept my teaching. I am telling you what my father has shown me, or you do, you do what your father has told you. They said, our father is Abraham. Jesus said, if you really if you were really Abraham's descendant, you will do what Abraham did. I am someone who has told you the truth I had from God. But you are trying to kill me. Abraham did nothing like that. So you are doing what your own father did. But they said, we are not like children who never knew who their father was. God is our father. He is the only father we have. Jesus said to them, if God were really your father, you would love me. I came from God and now I am here. I did not come by my own authority. God sent me. You don't understand the things I say because you cannot accept my teaching. Your father is the devil. You belong to him. You want to do what he wants. He was a murderer from the beginning. He was always against the truth. There is no truth in him. He is like the lies he tells. Yes, the devil is a liar. He is the father of lies. I'm telling you the truth and that's why you don't believe me. Can any of you prove that I'm guilty of sin? If I tell the truth, why don't you believe me? Whoever belongs to God accepts what he says, but you don't accept what God says because you don't belong to God. The Jews there answered, We say you are a Samaritan. We say a demon is making you crazy. Are we not right when we say this? Jesus answered, I have no demon in me. I give honor to my father, but you give no honor to me. I'm not trying to get honor for myself. There's one who wants this honor for me. He is the judge. I promise you, whoever continues to obey my teaching will never die. The Jews said to Jesus, Now we know that you have a demon in you. Even Abraham and the prophets died. For you say, whoever obeys my teaching will never die. Do you think you are greater than our, our father Abraham? He died and so did the prophet. Who do you think you are? Jesus answered, If I give honor to myself, that honor is worth nothing. The one who gives me honor is my father. And you say that he is your God, but you don't really know him. I know him. If I said I did not know him, I would be a liar like you. But I do know him and I obey what he says. Your father Abraham was very happy that he would see the day when I came. He saw that day and was happy. The Jews said to Jesus, What? How can you say you have seen Abraham? You are not even 50 years old. Jesus answered, The fact is, before Abraham was born, I am. When he said this, they picked up stones to throw at him, but Jesus hid and then left the temple area. Wow! <laughs> what an amazing, amazing, amazing discussion between Jesus and the people there. Oh my God! <laughs> I love this word. Okay. Uh, oh my God! <laughs> He said, he said, you are not even up to 50 years. And you say, you, you were before our father Abraham. They didn't know that in the beginning was, was the word. And the word was God. Uh, and the word was with God. And through him, everything. There was nothing that was created. That was not created through the word. Praise the Lord. Now, let, let me start on this note today. Okay. Um, today, tomorrow. This month, some people are going to trick you. Um, that just occurred to me as I'm 
as I was reading the word of the Lord today. So uh, they, they, they brought the woman that was caught in the act of adultery, they brought her before Jesus. The Bible says that, you know, um, they wanted our Lord Jesus to condemn the, the woman. And the Bible says that they were saying this to trick Jesus. So um, I'm, I'm advising you, it's a suggestion, you may want to take it. Uh, some people are going to provoke you so you can talk. And they will want to hold on to whatsoever you say. Uh, so take control of your anger. Be careful what you say. It may be in your place of work. It may be in your relationship. If there's a way you can go and if there's anything like that, anything like that um, get a padlock and um, padlock your mouth. Um, that's the word of the Lord for someone. Um, thank you, Jesus, for that. I believe that's going to save someone. Be careful what you say. Uh, in the days ahead, I want you to listen with your two ears and uh, you know speak so you listen twice you know so you can just say okay fine uh or you listen twice and then you say a few words you know because some people are trying to trick you they are trying to put put words in your mouth thank you lord that's it and then they're going to hang you later on based on those words praise the lord now uh the first in the two things i want to share today uh the first thing is um Don't judge your brother. Mm -hmm. Don't judge your brother. Jesus said in um, uh, in the scripture that we read today, he said, anyone here who has never sinned should throw the first stone at her. And, um, you know, Romans chapter 4 verse 10 says, so why do you judge your brother or sister? Uh, I love one translation of the Bible. It says, so why do you think you are better than they are? So all of us on Facebook who have been saying some things, this particular bishop is this, that bishop is that, you know, are you perfect? Have you done everything God asked you to do? Now, uh, remember, we will all stand before God. He will judge us all. Uh, Jesus said in Matthew chapter 7, verses 1 to 3, he said, judge not that ye be not judged. I love this. He said, for with what judgment you judge, you shall be judged. So I need to be careful though. <laughs> I really need to be careful in, in judging people. You know, um, one thing I, I, I find interesting uh, in this particular account, you know, of them bringing the woman, you know, um, we were told that, you know, uh, when they told Jesus, uh, we, we read that when they told Jesus, you know, uh, the law of Moses said that we should stone whosoever is caught in the act of adultery, we should stone the person to death. And Jesus was writing something. Uh, it was amazing because um, when he told them, uh, he said, any one of you who have never seen, you can cast the first stone, and they left one by one. And I was just wondering, <laughs> why did that happen? Uh, because um, they, were imp they, they were partial, you know, they were not fair, because they caught two people. People, you know, King James say they caught the woman in the very act. So even they themselves that caught them in the act, they have committed an offense of lucre. <laughs> if there's anything like that. You know, that was there supposed, supposed to be some element of PFC, you know. Why why are you going to check them? Why are you following them? Why are you trailing them? If you are not interested, you know, in, in their heart, they've also committed adultery. That's why they ran away. And apart from that, they only brought one person. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe the, the man tipped them, gave them some things and said, Look, uh, uh, please don't bring me out. I don't want to be stoned to death. Just take this woman because uh, she was she, she was a wicked face. You know, isn't that what we do sometimes around? Um, we 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 have opportunity, we we do partial, partial judgment, you know, the divide and rule, you know, isn't that what some people do? So uh, our Lord Jesus Christ said, don't judge. Um, so don't judge. And and I look at something here that, um, you know, he said that the Bible says that their consciences, uh, their conscience condemned them and they left one by one. So it's a good thing because uh, we don't want to be in a place whereby, you know, our conscience is seared. You know, uh, when we are wrong, when we do something that is not right, 
you know, and we come face to face with the word of God, like they came face to face with Jesus here, uh, for them to still have gone ahead and cast the first stone because their conscience did not judge them. Now, what is not good, what is not good is that after your conscience have judged you, is for you to remain in condemnation, thinking that because your conscience have judged you, so the same way God, you know, have judged you and then you are condemned. So uh, this is where First John chapter 3, verse 20 comes to play. It says, For if our heart condemns us, God is greater than our heart and know all things. So uh, when your conscience, you know, rebukes you or condemns you, you're not supposed to do that. You repent, you ask God to forgive you, and you then move on. You don't live in condemnation. I, I find situation of people who just find it so difficult to forgive themselves. They are so mean. They, are, they still remember what they did to themselves. They, they remember, uh, the, you know, the, the, the decisions that they took, you know, that, that, that made them to be bankrupt, or they remembered, you know, that mistake, you know. Uh, it, it's so bad that, you know, you have a child, you're still looking at that child that, you know, uh, it, it, it's a child of mistake. You know, um, there's no such thing as an illegitimate child. There can be illegitimate parents. So you don't begin to think that, oh, uh, God, and some people even think, let me say this, that uh, uh, God is punishing them <laughs> with sickness for, uh, I, 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 I do hear all sorts of things, you know, <laughs> when I go out for evangelism. Uh, God is maybe God wants to punish me with my sickness. How can God punish you with with sickness? God doesn't punish anybody. We say because they read in the Bible and said that look, uh, the Lord sent this to destroy some people. I, they didn't even read the full picture. <laughs> oh, anyway, um, so so John three seventeen says, for God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. So um, God will not condemn you. The Holy Spirit will not condemn you. The Holy Spirit wants you to be saved. The Holy Spirit will encourage you. We motivate you. That does not mean that God, you know, tolerates sin. That doesn't mean the Holy Spirit tolerates sin. And I think that is a thin line there because anything goes because uh, God doesn't judge us. In, uh, in, in, he doesn't judge us. Uh, we, we think that everything is right. We just think that it doesn't matter. Is my heart. So, um, um, uh, what, what you see on the outside is a reflection of what is in your heart. You, you, you will not just do anything without first and foremost thinking about it. So, uh, that's why it's important, like we read in the book of... Um, uh, Second Timothy there, I believe, you know, uh, chapter 1, where he says that love, uh, I, no, I think it's First Timothy chapter 1, where he says love out of a pure conscience and unfeigned faith. That's what it, that's the key thing in Christianity. So we are given the ministry of reconciliation and not condemnation. So we should not walk in condemnation and we shouldn't judge people. We should aim to reconcile people to God, reconcile yourself to God, and then reconcile people to God. So if you are under condemnation as you are watching this video today, I command every spirit of condemnation that have put you down, that have put you in a cage, I command it to be broken in Jesus' name. And I, I declare that you are set free by our Lord Jesus Christ, in Jesus' name, amen. Now, uh, the second thing I want to quickly share is continue to accept and obey the teaching of Jesus. Now, this is very important. Um, we read in, um, I believe, John chapter 6, uh, where Jesus Christ said they came to him, you know, after he told them not to labor for the bread that is going to perish, or they should labor for things that will not perish. And they came to him because they, they were really keen. They wanted to know more. And um, they came to him and said, What shall we do to walk the works of the kingdom of God? And he said, There's only one thing that is required, and that thing is for them to believe God and to believe the one that he sent, his son, his only begotten son. Uh, that's our Lord Jesus Christ. So, that means important for us not just to believe in our Lord Jesus Christ, 
we must believe what he said we have to read his word and we have to keep his words in our heart we have to continue in his word now uh for the point of emphasis said he said if you are my disciple okay let me read it he said uh, so jesus said if you continue in my words then are you my disciples indeed if you continue in my words then are you my disciples indeed so um let me quickly in the next few minutes go over some of the things that jesus said as a matter of fact uh as i was preparing for these studies uh, one of the things i'm going to start doing now i've got up to about um uh you know uh eight saints of jesus if i can finish it you know like people normally do quotes or tweet things i want to be tweeting what jesus said i am going to be doing that i i, I all that's what I, and i'm going to discipline myself and i want, want to encourage you to do the same thing so let me read some of the things that jesus says and you know take time to think about those words so the only work that is required of us is for us to think about what he says. So if he said that, go and make disciples of all nations, you know, he said you are only his disciple. You, you can't claim the fact that you are a church member, you are a member of, you know, whatever the name of church is, doesn't make you a disciple of our Lord Jesus Christ. You can be a church member and not be a disciple. So I, I hope we understand that. Um, you can go to the most popular church. You can go to the church with the uh, you know highest number of uh, people you know uh, in the United Kingdom or in in the US or wherever you are in China, wherever you're watching these videos from. But you may not be one of Jesus's disciples. So uh, you are only a disciple of Jesus when you continue in his word and you can only continue you can only continue in what you know uh so and he told her he said that when you continue in in his word you will know the truth and the truth that you know will set you free now so uh let's let's read some of those things uh he said uh john 6 3 6 says you must be born of water and of the spirit that's jesus saying speaking there uh, John 4, 23 to 24 say, I love this. It is who you are and the way you live that can't be for God. You now, keep these words, you know, when you keep it and you begin to live it, then are you the disciple of Jesus? John 4, 38, I sent you to reap that where you have no not bestowed labor. Other men labor and you have entered into their labors, you know. So why don't you just wake up one day and say, Lord, where are you sending me today? Um, which field are you sending me to, to go and, you know, gather in the harvest, you know, harvest of souls into the kingdom of God? Where are you sending me today? Some other people have labored and then, and then you know, uh, the field is ripe for harvest. Where are you sending me today, you know? And it could not just be harvest of soul, it could be financial harvest. Say, Lord, who is that person that you have spoken to today to give me money? Um, uh, uh, which company is it is ready to give out discount voucher today? I'm bringing it home. Uh, or where are they doing sales today? Where I'm going to buy something that is worth 150 pounds. I'm going to buy it for 50 pounds, make 100 pounds savings. So that's God, that's Jesus sending you into the harvest where you have not labored. Um, John 6, 53, I love this one for my flesh is food true food and my blood is drink indeed i love that scripture oh my god i mean on, on the account of this scripture alone you will take communion every day because this scripture is talking about communion so go and check the video we did on john chapter 6 and you see the link between that scripture and uh communion and it said that everyone i, I want you to listen to this everyone who eats my flesh and drinks my blood is in me and i in him isn't that amazing um so when you eat his flesh which is uh, the bread the communion and drink the blood and the wine uh he said you are in him and then he is in you and then you will live through him um john 7 
38 says that um, he that believe in Jesus out of him shall flow the rivers of living water. You know, uh, are rivers flowing out of you already? We say one way through which you can do that is by praying in the spirit, praying in tongue, and then you confessing the word of God. Wow, John 8, 32 that we read. Uh, if you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed? And you shall know the truth, and the truth you know shall make you free. Praise the Lord. Let's pray for those who are sick. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your word. Your word said in Matthew chapter 8, verse 16, that you healed everyone that was brought to you, and uh, you cast out demons. You have given me the authority to cast out demons, so I'm going to cast out demons in your name today. So, according to that authority that I have in your name, and so that the people watching today who are sick might know the full meaning of what was written about you in the book of Isaiah, that you took away their diseases, our diseases, and you carry away our sicknesses. So, I declare, I command every demon in the body of people watching me right now that has caused every every sickness with pain hardship i command those demons to leave their holes right now in the mighty name of jesus you know somebody you, you can you can talk very well before uh but the lord has lose your tongue now you will be able to speak fluently as from today in the mighty name of jesus lord i just thank you for this miracle oh thank you lord for this anointing thank you for the healing anointing i tell you you just just receive it uh whatever you want you can just take it receive it in the name of jesus lord i thank you for all these miracles that you are doing thank you for that small yes lord that small boy that they're carrying on their laps as they're watching this video right now I command that temperature to go down right now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Now, before I go, I want you to say yes to Jesus. You know, um, uh, uh, the Bible says that God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that through him, uh, the whole world might be saved. Um, my brother, you need Jesus. Uh, what we read in that scripture today, they told Jesus, he said, uh, look, oh, even the prophets, Abraham, every one of them, they died. How can you say that, you know, uh, anyone who read your word or anyone who continue in your word will live forever? And that's the truth. If you receive the word of the Lord, if you accept Jesus Christ, into your heart today you will live forever those were the words of jesus they were not my word um and uh, jesus will give you eternal life so if you want to have eternal life and i like to say this because eternal life is knowing god you know a lot of people go to church but they have not come into this experience they have not come into this realization a lot of people do religion uh which is man's idea of who god is but it's good for you to accept jesus so you can have eternal life eternal life is knowing god and uh, and his son jesus christ whom you have sent so if you want to be born again you want to give your life to jesus christ so that he can do something better with it i want you to say these prayers after me say lord jesus i confess that i am a sinner I repent of my sins today. I believe you died for me so I can have eternal life. I ask you to come into my heart. Be my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. Please, uh, we want to hear from you. Uh, if you say that prayer, you're going to see our address on the screen shortly, you know. Um, the telephone number and the email address please do get in touch with us we want to send you some materials free of charge 
uh, that's going to help you grow spiritually. We want to encourage you to find a local church uh, near you, which you can be part of. You know, tell them that uh, we send you from Heaven of Glory Church. Um, if you want to be part of Heaven of Glory Church, I want you to uh, please write us and then we will give you details. We do a lot of um, online programs tomorrow, Friday, by the grace of God. Uh, we're going to be online for our interactive Bible studies. So if you want to be part of that, send us a text message or an email and we will give you how to access it. Or you can go on our uh, Facebook page. All the details are available on there on how you can join the online program may god himself the god who makes everything holy and whole make you holy and whole put you together spirit soul and body and keep you fit for the coming of our master jesus christ the one who called you is completely dependable if he said it he would do it thank you so much for watching this video I uh, want to encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can visit our YouTube channel and watch all the other videos that we have done in the time pass or go to our Facebook page, just look for Heaven of Glory or Text World. You will see all the videos on all our pages and then you can watch it. Uh, if you are blessed by this video, uh, please do us a favor. Use it as an, uh, to minister to someone as a form of evangelism. Send it to someone. At least you are sure that you know someone will... Uh, uh, hear the sinner's prayer and then they will say it and then they're going to get born again. Thank you so much for watching the video until we come your way same time tomorrow 10 p.m. UK time. God bless you and bye.